In this video, I'm going to show you how to place the front bumper impact absorber on this Mazda 6. Let's get started. On each side at the top under the hood, you'll see that there's supposed to be two Phillips headed uh, screws or bolts really, they're machine thread. So mine is different here, but they're supposed to both be the same. Take a screwdriver and unthread them both. Once again, this is going to apply to both sides. This is what they look like. I'm gonna have to use a 10 millimeter on this one. A lot of times these up here get extremely rusty, which is most, most likely why this one was replaced. Do the same to the other side. Let's remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the air intake here. Once you loosen them up, you should be able to pull this up and out like this, whether the bolts come out or the whole piece slides up. Sometimes these bolts get stuck. You don't have to completely remove this, but we do have to lift it up to get access to that push clip. With a trim tool, pop the push clip up. We'll remove the center first and then pop the rest of it out. There's another one towards the right side of where we just were. Remove that as well. And all the way on the other side where we had the two screws at the beginning, there should be another push clip. Remove that as well. And if you pull on the top of the bumper, you'll see that it's loose. On the side of the bumper cover in the wheel well, if you just turn the wheel, you have access to the three push clips that are on here. Use the same trim tool, pop them all out. We have to free up the fender liner from the bumper cover. And once you do this, with all three removed, you'll be able to peel this back. Right up in here, there's gonna be an eight millimeter screw that we have to remove. It's gonna be a little tricky to see, but if you stick an extension with an eight millimeter socket right up there, you should be able to remove it. There it is. Underneath the vehicle, you'll see several eight millimeter headed screws. Start here and just go on the perimeter of the bumper cover and remove them all. These shields will kind of droop down a little bit, but they won't come off completely. There's a push clip here that we'll come back for. There should be three more screws on this side. Let's get the two push clips that were here. Hold the shield so it doesn't fall down suddenly. There we go. Looks like it is also clipped in over here, or hooked in I should say. There we go, that's all. Underneath this shield, you'll see two push clips that are kind of hiding in there, here and here. We have to pop these out. Otherwise the bumper will be stuck on the bottom here. Now these are kind of gummed up with a bunch of sand and debris. So a lot of times they're difficult to remove. And if you break them, you're gonna have to source new ones. Just work them back and forth. Eventually they should break free and come out. There we go. If your vehicle has fog lights, unplug the wiring harness, press on that connector Wiggle it off till it comes off the bulb. There we go. And we're going to have to pop the wiring harness off of this retainer. Do the same on the other side. Reaching in from behind the corners, pop the front bumper off of the fender. It's got a bunch of clips and follow it along at the top here. We're going to do the same on the other side. At this point, all of the hardware is off, so we are left with just two big alignment pins here and here. They go into the body of the vehicle, and they're sort of like push clips at the same time, so you have to grab and pull firmly. There we go. Now you can remove your bumper cover. Once we're at this point, we're going to have to remove this entire plastic piece here to free up the, uh, well, the styrofoam, but also obviously the impact absorber. This kind of goes up and around it. On each side at the top, uh, next to each horn, you'll see that it has a push clip. Use a trim tool and pop this out. This should free up the top. Same on the other side here. Towards the center, you'll see another set of two push clips, one on each side. With that removed, all that's holding this piece on is these little clips that you have to pry up on. 
and pull out. It's kind of like a little locking tab. Once again, one on each side. With that out, you can remove this piece. In the center below the hood latch, you have two 10 millimeter bolts. Remove those. Next, I want to get this white styrofoam piece out of my way. On the back side, if you stick in a tool or a screwdriver of some sort, you can push the center of the push clip out then pry out the outer piece. Do this to both sides and this should come right off. It has these uh, little inserts here that kind of lock it in, but they're not actually locked in. They're just pressed in nice and snug. Set this aside. On each side, you'll see multiple fasteners here. We're going to leave those back there for last. However, what I do want to do is take these two 10 millimeter fasteners off. There's two on each side. Let's start with these over here. Do the same on the other side. Now on each side where the impact absorber meets the frame rails, you'll see four 14 millimeter headed bolts. You can't see the fourth one because it's right up there. Remove them. You might need a swivel for a couple of them just to clear everything. Right up there below the headlight, you can see the fourth one. Let's do the same on the other side. Because it's not bolted on anymore, it did drop down. At this point, you can pull it away. This plastic here is gonna be stopping you. And there it is. Let's reinstall the impact absorber, slide it into position, get these uh, plastic pieces to line up. There we go, make sure it's pressed all the way up against the frame rail. All right, unlike when we disassembled, I'm going to start by putting these two bolts in the center here, just so this can stop falling down. This will hold it at least at the right height as I try to line up the rest of the bolts. I'm gonna get these a little bit closer, but not tight. I want this to still be able to move around, but at least, like I said, this will be held on at the right height now. Next, I'm gonna do the same over here with these bolts. I'm just gonna start them in. I'm not gonna tighten them. I just want this to be held on a little bit better. You want to make sure it still moves around a little bit. Let's do the same on the other side with these two little 10 millimeter bolts. And with all those started, let's start in these uh, larger bolts that go onto the frame rail. Whatever lines up first, you might have to push this a little bit to get it lined up properly. Once you get one started, the other ones should be lined up and ready to be threaded on. Starting that top one is gonna be a little difficult at this point. So what I'm gonna do is actually tighten these three while pushing this up. Basically what's happening is it's uh, sitting a little too far down and I can't push it up and stick my hand in there at the same time. But if I push it up and clamp it with these, that hole should be perfectly lined up. So that's the plan. There we go. Once you clamp it down with one, it shouldn't move. I can see that hole is perfectly lined up now. So let's get that bolt in. All right. Got it started. Perfect, let's snug all these up. Since we're already here and torquing these down and finishing up on this side will not affect the other side, let's, well, tighten these down. The torque for these is gonna be 35 foot-pounds. I know I have to use a swivel on that one, but it is better than not torquing it at all. So all of these are torqued down properly. Let's go to the other side. Same deal over here, just might be a little trickier because of all these wires that are in the way. But basically, we're gonna have to push up. As you can see, it doesn't quite line up. We left all the other bolts loose, so this should easily basically swivel up into place, stick a bolt in, tighten it up, and then we'll torque it.
I'm going to do the same thing over here. Pull this up till I can see that inner bolt line up, tighten one, and then stick that bolt in. Right about there. All right, got it in. Let's tighten them all up. Let's torque them down now. 35 foot pounds, just like the other side. Bottom out all the 10 millimeter headed fasteners and then torque them to 80 inch pounds. There we go. Let's reinstall this styrofoam piece. Make sure it lines up everywhere and press it on. It had one push clip on each end. Stick that through. Once it's through, press the pin to lock it in. Do the same on the other side. Let's get this large plastic piece installed here. Line it up and it's not going to stay until you clip it in. I'm going to start clipping it onto the, the two lower clips first here which are not push clips, they're just little tabs. That'll hold it in place and now put in the four push clips. There are two in the middle here. Lock them down. If any of them are broken, replace them so that things can be secured in place properly. And one on each side. There you go, that's secured. Let's get the bumper cover back on. Now take your bumper cover and slide it over everything. Make sure it lines up. And you have those two alignment pins that need to fall into place, which you can see through the sides by the headlights. Once those are in, press them both in. That should hold your bumper cover in place on each side. Line it up with the fender and the headlight. Tap it into place. On the side, let's put in the eight millimeter headed screw that secured the bumper cover onto the fender. Snug it up, it's only going into plastic, so once it bottoms out, just give it a little extra and that's it. Make sure you tuck the fender liner behind the bumper here, but then on the bottom it needs to be over so that we can put all the push clips in. Reinstall all three. If any of yours were missing or broke, replace them. Do the same to the other side. Resecure the wire for the fog light and clip it back onto the fog light itself. Make sure that clicks, do the same to the other side. Take this clip, put it back into the bumper, tuck the shield underneath the bumper cover, and I'm just gonna start with putting back the two push clips so that it can be held in place while I put in the screws. Put in all the screws that hold this on. There are three on each side, put those back as well. Let's reattach the bumper at the top with the two uh, bolts. Mine has a uh, bolt, 10 millimeter head bolt here. Yours should be a Phillips head. Let's get the Phillips head in. It's a good idea to put some anti-seize on the threads of these to prevent them from rusting in the future. And when you tighten them up, just give them a little snug after they bottom out. You don't need to go very tight on those. Do the same on the other side. Reattach all the push clips at the top, lock them in. Just go along and re-secure all of them. Lift up the air intake here. Get that push clip on. There we go. We can set this back down. We'll come back in a second and tighten those up, but get the last push clip in. Take the bolts and start them back into their threads. And snug this up. This is on rubber bushing. You don't have to crush it or anything. Just make it snug. Everything's tight. So there you have it. Job is done. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do.
TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.